بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو المنیر ہائی سکول ای لرننگ سسٹم کلاس ٹین دس از یور فزکس لیکچر یونٹ نمبر از فورٹین پارٹ ون دس از دا ٹائٹل پیج آف یور فزکس بک فار کلاس ٹین ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اور نیو یونٹ یونٹ نمبر از فورٹین کرنٹ الیکٹریسٹی اٹ از اباؤٹ دا کرنٹ الیکٹریسٹی اسٹوڈنٹس ان دس یونٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لرن اباؤٹ دا الیکٹرک کرنٹ so first of all look at this theory the introduction of electric current what he is saying about the electric current most of the electric charge around us is bound in neutral atoms it is not in easy to overcome the electrostatic force of attraction between the nuclei and the electrons in an atom however but in the case of metals some electrons are not tightly bound to nuclei and are free to move around randomly they have weak force between them and the nucleus similarly is the case of solutions look here here we have the picture of this solution some positive and negative charges can move around randomly when such free charges are exposed to an external electric field they move in a specific direction and thus constitute the current electric current is produced due to the flow of either positive charge or negative charge or both of charges at the same time in case of metals the current is produced only due to the flow of free electrons which we call the negative charges so in case of electrolyte its molecules in aqueous solution dissociate among positive and negative ions look at the definition of electric current what is the definition the rate of flow of electric charge through any cross sectional area is called the current its formula is current is equal to charge over time we represent current with i charge q and time t the si unit is the ampere which is denoted by a capital letter a if a charge of 1 coulomb passes through a cross sectional area in 1 second then current in is 1 ampere so this is the definition of uh, ampere the unit of the current smaller units are milliampere microamperes which is equal to 10 with power minus 3 10 with power minus 6 battery is one of the sources of current the electrochemical reaction inside the battery separates positive and negative electric charges this separation of charges set up potential difference between the terminals of the battery as shown in the diagram here we have this diagram look here chemical reaction separates the charges the plus charges and the negative charges when we connect a conducting wire across the terminals of the battery the charges can move from one terminal to the other due to this potential difference so the energy chemical energy of the battery changes to electrical potential energy the electrical potential energy decreases as the charges move around the circuit this electrical potential energy can be converted to other useful forms of energy heat light and sound it is only the energy which change form but the number of charges carriers and the charge on each carrier always remain the same as shown in this figure 14.1 this is the schematic diagram of the battery as its current source next we have this example value of q is given t is given we have to calculate the current i next our topic is about the conventional current yes before the idea of free electrons which constitute current in metals it was thought that current in conductors flows due to the motion of positive charges therefore this convention is still in use but we can understand the concept of conventional current from the following analogies so before the uh, concept of the free electrons we have the concept of conventional current so next we have this figure 19.2 current flows in a conductor when it is connected to a battery we know that when the ends of heated copper wire are at different temperatures heat energy flows from the end at higher temperature to the end at lower temperature the flow stops when both ends reach the same temperature water in a pipe also flows from higher level to the lower level similarly when a conductor is connected to a battery it pushes charges to flow current from higher potential to the lower potential the flow of current continues as long as there is a potential difference between them so here we have the definition of conventional current current flowing from positive to negative terminal of a battery due to flow of positive charges is called the conventional current 
how we can measure the current students yes we have two different types of devices instruments one is galvanometer this is a picture of a galvanometer it is very sensitive instrument that can detect small current in a circuit a current of few milliampere is sufficient to cause full scale deflection in on it here it shows the deflection while making the connections polarity of the terminals of the galvanometer should be taken into consideration generally the terminal of the galvanometer with red color here we have this red color shows the positive polarity and black color shows the negative polarity an ideal galvanometer should have very small resistance to pass the maximum current in a circuit next students after suitable modification galvanometer can be converted into ammeter this is called the ammeter a large current of the range such as 1 ampere or 10 ampere can be measured by means of the ammeter now what is potential difference students when one and a here we have the a of a conductor is connected to the positive terminal b here we have the b is connected to the negative terminal of the battery then the potential of a becomes higher than the potential of at b so this causes a potential difference between the two ends of the conductor the flow of current continues as long as there is a potential difference the agency which provides the potential difference yes the flow of current in the copper wire is the battery as the current flows from higher potential to lower potential through the conductor the electrical energy due to current is converted into other forms of energy like heat and light so for your information here we have this dry cell chemical energy change into electrical energy so here students we have the definition this blue box shows the definition of potential difference potential difference across the two ends of a conductor causes the dissipation of electrical energy into other forms of energy as charges flow through the circuit si unit of potential difference is watt a potential difference of 1 watt across a bulb means that each coulomb of charge or 1 ampere of current that passes through the bulb consumes 1 joules of energy what is electromotive force a source of electromotive force emf converts non electrical energy chemical thermo mechanical into electrical energy examples of sources of emf are batteries thermo uh, couples and uh, generators when a conductor is connected to a battery current flows through it due to the potential difference for the continuous flow of current through a wire battery supplies energy to the charges the positive charge leaves the positive terminal of the battery passes through the conductor and reaches the negative terminal of the battery as a positive charge enters the battery at its lower potential point which is called the negative terminal the battery must supply energy say w to the positive charge to drive it to a point of higher potential so students here we have the definition proper definition jisko aapne yaad karni hai it is energy supplied by a battery to a unit positive charge when it flows through the closed circuit or we can define also define it as the energy converted from non electrical forms to electrical form when one coulomb of positive charge passes through the battery here we have the formula energy over charge e is equal to w over q where e is electromotive force w is energy converted from non electrical forms to electrical form and q is positive charge so the unit is joules coulomb which is equal to volt v in si system so here we have the definition of this unit how we can measure the potential difference yes with the help of a the uh, instrument we call it voltmeter connected directly to the terminals of the component the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the positive terminal of the voltmeter and the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the terminal negative terminal of the voltmeter so an ideal voltmeter should have very large value of resistance so that no current passes through it voltmeter is always connected in parallel with the device across which the potential difference is to be measured we can also measure the electromotive force yes potential difference across the terminals of the battery when it is not driving current in the external circuit so in order to measure emf of the battery we connect voltmeter directly with the terminals of the battery as it shown in figure 14.9 next students to understand the ohms law first we have this activity take a nichrome wire of about 50 cm length 
and they apply a potential difference of 1.5 watts from a battery now measure the current flowing through the wire using an ammeter so here we have this figure part a it's showing that also measure the potential difference across the wire using a voltmeter connected across it obtain a set of reading of current and watt by increasing the number of cells plot a graph between i and v so here we have the graph of voltage and current it shows the voltage and currents the relationship between them this will be a straight line if v is, is the potential difference across the two ends of any conductor then the current i will flow through it the value of the current change with the change in the potential difference so according to the ohms law the amount of current passing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its ends provided the temperature and the physical state of the conductor does not change so where r is the constant of pro proportionality and is the resistance of the conductors so the its si unit in ohm denoted by a symbol this if a graph is plotted between the current i and the potential difference v a straight line will be obtained what is resistance here we have the uh, definition and unit of a resistance the property of a substance which offers opposition to the flow of current through it jo current ko flow karne se rokti hai it is called the resistance its unit is r is ohm if we put v 1 watt i 1 amperes the value of r will be 1 ohm so we can say that when a potential difference of 1 watt is applied across the ends of a conductor and 1 ampere ampere of current passes through it then its resistance will be 1 ohm here we have the example 14.2 watt and current is given by applying this formula r is equal to v over i we get the answer yes vi characteristics of ohmic and non ohmic conductors ohms law is valid only for certain materials materials that obey ohms law and hence have a constant resistance over a wide range of voltages are said to be ohmic materials having resistance that changes with voltage or current are called non ohmic ohmic yes here students we have this picture resistance and temperature a term thermistor is a temperature depend resistor and its resistance decreases as temperature increases so ohmic conductors have a linear voltage current relationship over a large range of applied voltages the current line shows a constant ratio between voltage and current ohms law is obeyed for example most metals show ohmic behavior non if we talk about the non ohmic materials have a non linear voltage current relationship for example filament lamp and thermistor the resistance of filament is rises current decreases as it gets hotter which is shown by the gradient getting steeper a therm thermistor a heat resist sensitive resistor behaves in opposite way its resistance decreases as it gets hotter this is because on heating more free electrons become available for conduction of current factors affecting resistance what are these factors a short pipe offers less resistance to water flow than a long pipe so also the pipe with larger cross sectional area offers less resistance than the pipe having small cross sectional area same in the case of resistance of wires that carry current the resistance of a wire depends both on the cross sectional area and the length of the wire and on the nature of the material of the wire thick wires have less resistance than thin wires longer wires have more resistance than short wires copper wire has less resistance than steel wires of the same size so electrical resistance also depends on the temperature number one point the resistance r of the wire is directly proportional to the length of the wire it means that if we double the length of the wire its resistance will also be doubled and if its length is half its resistance would become one half now part uh, point 2 the resistance r of the wire is inversely proportional to the area of cross section of a of the wire it means that a thick wire would have smaller resistance than a thin wire after combining these two equations 14.3 and 14.4 we get 14.5 next where p is 
the constant of pro uh, proportionality known as specific resistance its value depends upon the nature of conductor copper iron tin silver wood each have a different values of p if we put l is equal to 1 meter yes a is equal to 1 meter square then r is equal to p the resistance of 1 meter cube of a substance is equal to its specific resistance so unit of p is ohm meter here we have 14.3 the uh, length of wire is given yes diameter is given cross section area of the wire by putting the values in this formula we get the uh, answer of a which is 3.14 into 10 with power minus 6 meter square specific resistance of copper is this now we have to calculate it by multiplying all these values we get the value of r Next students, our topic is about the conductors. What are the conductors? Why do we always use metal wires for the conduction of electricity? Because they are good conductors of electricity and offer less resistance to the flow of current. But how can they conduct electricity with much ease? Metals like silver, copper have excess of free electrons which are not held strongly with any particular atom of metals these free electrons move randomly in all directions inside metals when we apply an external electric field these electrons can move in a specific direction this movement of free electrons in a particular direction under the influence of an external field causes the flow of current in metal wires so the resistance of conductors increases with increase in temperature this is this is due to the increase in the number of collisions of electrons with themselves and with the atoms of the metals here we have this table metal and their specific resistance what are the insulators all materials contain uh, electrons the electrons in insulators like rubber however are not free to move they are tightly bound inside atoms so hence current cannot flow an insulator because they are no free electrons for the flow of current insulators have very large value of resistance insulators can be easily charged by friction and, and the induced charge remains static on their surface here we have the examples combination of resistors yes we can combine it in the form of series series combination in series co combination resistors are connected end to end so here we have this picture three resistors are in a series combination yes this means that the current passing through each resistor is the same equivalent resistance of series circuit the total voltage in a series circuit divides among the individual resistors v is equal to v1 plus v2 v v3 so the sum of the voltage across the resistance of each individual resistor is equal to the total voltage v where V is the voltage across the battery, V1, V2 are the voltages across resistors R1, R2 and R3 respectively. If I is the current passing through each resistor, then according to the Ohm's law, V is equal to I R1 plus I R2 plus I R3. We can take the I as common. So we can replace the combination of re resistors with a single resistor. So equivalent resistor is RE, V is equal to I R E becomes I R E is equal to i r1 plus r2 plus r3 thus the equivalent resistance of a series combination is equal to the sum of the individual resistances of the combination so here we have the example student yes we have to find out the equivalent resistance the current flowing through each of the resistance and the potential difference here data is given r1 is 6 k ohm and r2 is 4 k ohm the equivalent resistance of the series is r e is equal to r1 plus r2 by combining both values yes we get 10 k ohm if a battery of 10 voltage is connected through the equivalent resistance r e so with the help of this formula we calculate the value and get the current flowing through each of the resistance and in the end to find the potential difference across Yes, R1 is equal to R V1 is equal to which is equal to I R. So by multiplying it, we get the potential difference across R1 and R2. 
next we have the parallel combination here we have the picture of three resistors which are combined parallelly in parallel combination when each of each resistor is connected with positive terminal of the battery while the other end of the each resistor is connected with the negative terminal of the battery therefore the voltage is same across each resistor which is equal to the voltage of the battery v is equal to v1 is equal to v2 is equal to v3 equivalent resistance of parallel circuit so in parallel circuit the total current is equal to the sum of the currents in various resistances i is equal to i1 plus i2 i3 since the voltage across the each resistor is v so the by according to the ohms law i1 is equal to v over r1 i2 is equal to v over r2 and so on so we can take v as a common it will be like this 14.10 we can replace the combination of resistors with a single resistor re yes so now our equation will be r is equal to 1 is equal to re is equal to 1 over r1 r2 and so on thus the reciprocal of res uh, equivalent resistance of a parallel combination is sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistance which is less than the smallest resistance of the combination if, if res resistances r1 r2 r3 till rn are connected in parallel the equivalent resistance of the combination will be given as so here next we have the example if all these values are given as the resistors are connected in parallel equivalent resistance re of the combination is given by r is equal to 1 is 1 over re is equal to 1 over r1 r2 and r3 like this by putting the values in it we get the equivalent resistance this value is smaller than the lowest value of the resistance in the combination which is always the case in parallel circuits part b in parallel combination the potential difference how we can find out the potential difference across the each of the resistance is same and is equal to the potential of the battery which is 6 watts current through is 3 amperes then in case of r1 r2 and r3 so in part C, sum of the currents passing through the resistances in parallel combination is equal to the total current I of the circuits. Therefore, total current is 6A. Next, we have the activity 14.2. Connect a battery to a small 2.5 watt, watts light bulb and observe the brightness of the bulb. Connect a second light bulb in parallel with the first and observe the brightness of the bulbs now add a third bulb in parallel and with the others and note the brightness of the bulbs does the brightness of the bulbs differs from the bulbs connected in the series with the battery next electrical energy and joule's law turbine runs generator yes we know that to produce electrical energy when water falls on it from higher gravitational potential to lower gravitational potential similarly when charges come from higher electric potential to lower potential it delivers electric current thus the process during which charges continuously move from a higher potential to a lower potential becomes a continuous source of electrical energy consider two points with a potential difference of watts v if one coulomb of charge passes between these points the amount of energy delivered by the charge would be v joule Hence, when Q coulomb of charge flows between these two points, they will get Q V joules of energy. If we represent this energy by W, then equation will be W is equal to Q into V joules. Now, current when charge is Q flow in time T, it will be I is equal to Q over T, which is Q is equal to I T. So, the energy supplied by Q charge in into seconds which is w is equal to v into i into t this electrical energy can be converted into heat and other forms of energy from ohm's law v is equal to i r so the energy supplied by q charge is w is equal to i square r t is equal to v square t over r this is equation is called the joule's law so according to the joule's law joule's law the amount of heat generated in a resistance due to flow of charges is equal to the product of square of current i resistance r and the time duration t so this energy can be utilized for different useful purposes for example bulb converts this energy into light and heat heater fans usually this energy appears as a heat in the resistance and next we have the example 
data is given in the statement i is given v is given t is given by putting these values in this formula of energy we get our answer now using energy which is w is equal to i square rt we get resistance by putting the values what is electric power students the amount of energy supplied by current in unit time is known as electric power yes electric power is equal to w over t where w is electrical energy w is equal to qv qv q into v so from the above equations electric power is equal to qv over t is equal to iv which is equal to i square r when current i is passing through a resistor r the electric power that generates heat in the resistance is given by i to r the unit of electric power is watt which is equal to 1 joule per second 1 joules per second it is represented by the symbol w electric bulbs commonly used in houses consume 25 watts 40 watts 60 watts next we have the example 14.7 yes r is given v is given by putting the values we get the power as shown in the above topic kilowatt hour electrical electric energy is commonly consumed in a very large quantity for the measurement of which joule is a very small unit hence a very large unit of electric energy is in needed which is called kilowatt hour it is defined as the amount of energy delivered by a power of 1 kilowatt in 1 hour is called kilowatt hour 1 kilowatt is equal uh, minus 1 uh, hour 1 uh, kilowatts hour is, which is equal to 1000 watts into 1 hour by calculating these values we get 3.6 mega joules the energy in kilowatt hour can be obtained by the following formula students you have to learn this formula properly so the electric meter is installed in our houses my ears the consumption of electric energy in the units of kilowatt hours according to which we pay our electricity bills if the cost of the one kilowatt hour one unit is known we can calculate the amount of electricity bill by using the following formula look at this formula we have this example by putting the formula we will find the answer for example power is 50 watts we can convert it into kilowatts time is 8 hours number of units consumed 8 into 30 into 0 0.05 which is 12 watt uh, units and therefore total cost will be 144 rupees what is direct and alternating current the current derived from a cell or battery is direct current it is unidirectional the positive and negative terminals of direct current sources have fixed polarity therefore level of direct current remains constant with the time on contrary there is also a current which changes its polarity again and again such a current that changes direction after equal intervals of time is called alternating current this type of current is produced by ac generators the time interval interval after which the ac voltage or current repeats its value is known as its time period the change in the value of voltage and current corresponds to the frequency of the source in pakistan alternating current oscillates 50 times every second thus its frequency is 50 hertz alternating current has advantages that make it more practical for use in transferring electrical energy supply to a house the electric power enters our house through three wires one is called earth wire or ground wire this carries no electricity the earth wire is connected to large metal plate buried deep in the ground near the house the other wire is maintained at zero potential by connecting it to the earth at the power station itself and is called neutral wire n this wire provides a return path for the current the third wire is a is at a high potential and is called live wire the potential difference between the live wire and the neutral wire is 220 watts our body is a good conductor in electricity through which current can easily pass therefore if a person holds live wire current will start flowing to the ground while passing through this body which may prove fatal for the person house wiring yes what is about the house wiring the wires coming from the mains are connected to electricity meter installed in the house the output power from the electric meter is taken to the main distribution board and then to the domestic electric circuit the main box contains fuses of rating about 30 amperes 
separation separate connections is taken from the live wire of each appliance the terminal of the appliance is connected to the live wire through a separate fuse and a switch if the fuse of one appliance burns out it does not affect the other appliances so here we have the full wiring system of a household electricity students you have to observe all this the here we have our electric meter here we have our distribution board to one room to other room and to the other terminal socket outlet bulb fan you have to un understand and draw it again and again to understand this in house wiring all appliances are connected in parallel with each other this means they all get the full mains voltage and no one turn on any appliance without having to turn on an other hazards of electricity while electricity has become part and parcel of our lives care should be taken to save ourselves from its uh, hardiest effects voltage of 50 watts and current of 50 uh, ma uh, means amperes can be fatal major dangers of electricity are electric shock and wire in this chapter in the end we will study this insulation damage all electric wires are well in insulated with some plastic cover for the purpose of the safety but when electric current exceeds the rate the rated current of carrying capacity of the connector it can produce excess current that can damage insulation due to overheating of cables this results into a short circuit so which can be dangerous for electrical devices and persons a short circuit occurs when a circuit with a very low resistance is formed the low resistance causes the current to be very large when appliances are connected in parallel each additional appliance placed in circuit reduces the equivalent resistance in the circuit and increases the current through the wires this additional current might produce enough thermal energy to melt the wiring insulation which causes a short circuit short circuit can also occur when the live wire and the neutral wire come in contact as shown in this figure 14.17 in order to avoid such uh, conditions the wires carrying electricity should be should never be naked rather they sh uh, should be uh, covered with good insulator such an insulator covered wire is called the cable constant friction may also remove the insulation from the wire whereas too much moisture also damages the insulation damp con uh, damp conditions dry human skin has a resistance of 1 lakh ohms or more but under damp conditions wet environment resistance of human skin is reduced uh, drastically to few hundred ohms therefore never operate any electrical appliance with wet hands safe use of electricity in homes in order to protect persons devices and property yes from the hazards of electricity there is need of extensive safety measures in household electricity to much take much care to use fuses and circuit breakers in an electric circuit as safety devices they prevent circuit overloads that can occur when too many appliances are turned on at the same time or when a short circuit occurs in one appliance fuse a fuse is a safety device that is connected in series with the live wire in the circuit to protect the equipments when excess current flows it is short and thin piece of metal wire that melts when large current passes through it if a large unsafe current passes through the circuit the fuse melts and breaks the circuits before the wires become very hot and cause fire fuses are normally rated as 5a 10a 13a 30a so different types of fuses are shown in this figure fuses to be used should have slightly more rating than the current which with the electrical appliances will draw under normal conditions so here we have the example of for a lightning circuit choose a of a 5 ampere ampere fuse as the current drawn by each lamp is very small so in such circuits 10 lamps of 100 watts can be safely used as the current total current drawn is only 4 ampere which can be cal calculated using this formula fuses should be connected in the live wire so that the appliance will not operate after the fuse has blown switch off the main before changing any fuse circuit breaker breaker acts as a safety device in the same way as a, fu a fuse it disconnects the supply automatically if current exceeds, exceeds the normal value when the normal current passes through the live wire 
the electromagnet is not strong enough to separate the co contacts if something goes wrong with the appliance and large current flows through the live wire the electromagnet will attract the iron strip to separate the con contacts and break the current break the circuit the spring then keeps the contacts apart earth wire yes sometimes each fuse the, uh, even the fuse cannot capture the high currents coming from the live wire into household appliances earthing further protects the user from electric shock by connecting the metal casing of appliances to the earth so here students we have the figure 14.221 however the earth terminal is connected to the metal casing so the current goes through the earth wire instead of passing through our body and causing an electric shock a strong current passes through the electric earth wire because it has a very low resistance this breaks the fuse and disconnects the appliances so students this is all for today thank you allah hafiz